previously on Chilling. I didn't know at that time that it was actually my uncle, General Charlie Gonda, who led the movement, the, that attack, mm -hmm. you know. And we, we were in town for some time. So I was a good footballer mm. uh, in the earlier days. I was a captain of Kampa Primary School. Because mm. whenever we had matches with Odi Kampala in Zambia, we, we always had recurrent fights and stuff. I'm um, to be a bit, bit. <laughs> Interesting. It was a boxing club called UTC Boxing Club. That's where I started boxing from. And I trained for like two weeks and I went to compete wow. in Lugogo. Wow. And I was, Only two weeks? Uh, two weeks. And they put me in perspective. Wow. And I lost miserably. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Drago and I'm the host of Chilling and I'm asking you my friend to keep the love coming on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter that is Chilling UBC TV. Chilling. Very very much excited for staying with us since the last two weeks now. This is incredible because we are making history. We are moving on to a third part. Can you believe it? Because we have an extraordinary person who has to share with us extraordinary stories. Mr. Nyakana, an entrepreneur, a man who has more than one gym, and uh, apparently, by the way, I don't know why I didn't mention it from the start. We are at, uh, almost closer to his gym, and uh, as you can see, a poolside behind me, and uh, this is Centenary Park. We're having a yard of time and uh, sharing stories. So, Mr. Nyakana, tell me something. Your life in America, how did you even get to, to live in the Bronx? Let's start from there. Okay, well, uh, in... 91, I was fighting the Fran French champion who was the number 12 in the world, who was number one in Europe. Oh. Uh, Daniel Bicheri was uh, a, a French Arab and I knocked him out in the fifth round in Paris. Excuse me, a KO? Yes, so oh. the, the uh, Levalois, the guy from the States who had brought another fighter to fight was very impressed. It was called Bobby Miles. Yeah. So he told me, what are you doing in this area, man? This place is not a boxing area. <laughs> he to come to the States. Yeah. And uh, he uh, arranged and I went to the States. You know. And uh, he was one of the best coaches I've ever seen. Yes, I know you mentioned that. Before. And um, uh, just didn't have in, in the connection because mm. he was a black guy, you know, he was a bit arrogant, mm. you know, pomp. That's how I got to the States, you know. So I went to the States, I had one fight against Willie Wise, one of the good boxers around at that time across the world. And uh, they, they gave me a draw mm. because they didn't want me to win the fight. I know on record Chicken. I won the fight, they gave him a draw mm. at his home, you know. Because they, want, they wanted to keep his title. Exactly, record. record, yes. Yeah. So uh, I studied with that guy in the Bronx for some time, you know. There, there and, were some uh, other Ugandans you were with, but I've never heard them before. There the were many two Ugandan, some other Ugandans. The many Ugandans that I took to the States, mm. some I took, some I, I arranged you know, when I had come back you know, and uh, helped them to go to the States you know, so they could try their careers. Some made it, some didn't, but they still improved their lifestyle, they built their homes here. Across the world, not only in the States, in Sweden, in UK, I was helping to connect them and move them, get a better life. Mm. But the States is the place where to be because you get all the information you need about the world. And also the other issue, they have the best attitude you can ever have anywhere. Mm. You will never lose your way. If you lose your way, someone will have time to stand on the street in New York, mm. direct you where the place is. Mm. Even if you don't speak English, you will direct you in signals. So uh, the American, and if they come and find you on the train, hey man, what's happening, man? Nice to see you, man. What's your name, man? They will try to get involved, and that, that's the that's thing that makes them unique. Mm. Yeah, they're not like the Europeans. The Europeans are more communal. If you make a friend in Europe, you, that friend will stay forever. In America, you make a friend in a minute, then Chances are high that he might forget in a you couple of times, yes. Yeah. But uh, the America is about relationship, 
adopting to their uh, culture and adopting to the country. How, how was that? Was it a smooth transition for you? I mean, uh, with the food, with the transportation, uh, didn't you get lost? To be honest. Nah, nah. New York is a big Because I had a city. driver take me around. Oh, I yeah. Had, yeah, I had all that stuff. Oh, first class but trip. still, I did. Um, adapt the local steams because I'm also a very down-to-earth person. I would use the train you know, from my home to the Bronx, to Brooklyn, to the gym, you know, Gleason's gym, one of the best gyms in the States. And um, I would take an hour and a half, an hour and a half coming back. I would go through Wall Street, all those big areas, you know, you sit in the train and you're sitting to a guy next to you who is worth 500 million dollars and he left his vehicle at the train station in some little area neighborhood and he's on the and, you, and you're talking he talks to you you know that's, that's what makes the americans catch, capture the whole world attitude you know them you don't know them you they will make sure that they know you and you know them by the time you leave everyone knows the other there's this script you live by in life saying that you don't actually have to judge a person by their appearances mm. the way they dress yes listen Mm. Listen to them. Mm. What are they saying? Are exactly. they smart? Mm. But not in Uganda. In Uganda, they judge you by how you're dressed, your age, your size. I you think know, you're which smart car person. you're driving, you know. Yeah, but I think uh, you're a smart person. And, and it's and unfortunate, you know. Because mm. you, you shouldn't judge people by what they appear to be. Mm. Everyone has a, mi a mind. Mm. People have good minds, simple people. You know. Good minds, they will tell you something that. Is amazing and you're like oh wow that's interesting maybe we could put efforts together not in uganda if they find someone like you at your age and you tell someone and they say ah oh no man i'm full of answer i'm out of the one yeah so the issue of attitude is affecting uganda the issue of habit culture interpersonal and it's, life is about interpersonal how do you relate with people and how do you keep the relationship and even if you're a young person and you want to develop, you must have a relationship with, with each other and you grow together. Mm. Now, Mr. Nyakana, uh, let's talk about Title Shot. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a movie, it's no. a film. That Ranked fifth by the WBC, ninth by the WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, Godfrey Nyakana. was directed by Ross. How did even Ross convince you to do that? Or how did you come in? Well, uh, at the time I was uh, at the top. I was like number six in the whole world. And uh, they were gathering pump. There's pump around when I was training, sparring with the uh, guys like the uh, Shane Mosley. Wait, Shane Mosley? Where, yeah, I got some many rounds oh. with him. Uh, Zab Shane Buda. Mosley is one of the champions in America, man. Yes, how, how did it yes, feel to yes. spy with him? Oh, I had, it was just, we were the same generation, same level, you know. He was a smaller guy, he was a Walter Wade, he was a yes, junior in a way. No, he was not short, but he was a junior, he was a Walter Wade. I was just a killer, like one, one level behind, over him in weight. And he was just trying to get involved also at the, that level. We had some good time with him. Whenever he came to New York, I would take him around the spa. The ladies say uh, that Shane Mosley uh, has attractive eyes. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Did you know. even look at his eyes? I like, because I mean, when a person is talking to you, they look straight into yeah, your eyes. Yeah, he's very, very nice guy. Even the father is a very good guy, you know. And mm. um, I went to their home in, in LA. That's where they come from originally. Oh, yeah, 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 and uh, we used to fight a train at the Hollywood gym. Interesting, you know. Off the Bray Avenue, which is one of the best streets in, in town in LA, in LA. Mm. and uh, had a good time. You know. those, those are good guys. George Foreman, you know, had time with him, mm. and uh, I was I was chatting him, you know, that because when he came to Congo, mm. Ali was very wise. He adapted the Congolese language. He asked people, "What does killing mean?" He told him, "Bomai." So whenever Ali came, he said, Ali, and everyone would say, Bomai. So even when they came into the ring, it frustrated. Oh, it was amazing. Bomai, you know. 
So I was talking to him and he said, man, that guy was nuts. That's what he told me. That guy was nuts. He was a crazy guy. Can you believe <laughs> you're sharing stories Yeah, about and because he said that, because uh, Ali told uh, Fuamon, you're too ugly to be world champion. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other one who was boxing and was like, say my name? The one who was calling uh, him. Uh, Patterson, Floyd yeah, Patterson. The one who was calling him uh, Cassius Clay. Uh, for Floyd Patterson. Mm. At the time, actually, I went to the stage. Was the he was the head of the sports uh, athletic commission in New York City, mm. and uh, he was a good guy. But he passed on. He mm. passed on also. Yes. So now every career we know in life mm. has a downfall. Mm. What was going through your mind or your head when you lost uh, that title shot at, in LA? When, when, I, when, when I lost, yes. uh, no, when I lost actually in uh, New York, not LA, I was fighting Vernon Phillips. Vernon Phillips was top, 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 and I was winning like nine rounds to. to he was winning one out of ten rounds, and uh, I, uh, in the eleventh, got lucky and he knocked me out. Wow. And uh, later on, like eight years later, uh, Kasim Omar took a title away from him. You yeah, nine years later. But uh, the the whole process is uh, amazing. You know, exposure is very critical, and uh, mm. I got some good exposure. I got some good information, and I can't get any better. You know. Shilling. Mzee, let's turn it back, mm. bring it back, back home here. Now I met, I met Puff Daddy. I even oh. have a photo with him. For real? Yeah, he's, Where's the photo? he's full of Where's it. The I, photo? I have all the photos you know, on my Facebook and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have a Facebook page? Yes, I do. You have a Twitter handle? No, no, Twitter, but I'm Facebook. I'm Facebook. What, what's your Facebook uh, page? Uh, Godfrey Nyakana. Godfrey Nyakana. Mm. Please go on Facebook and look out for Godfrey Nyakana. You'll see all the photos. Mm. You will mm. get a picture of what we're talking about. Mm. So, Mze, as I entered your gym when we were having a, 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 a simple workout mm. in the first part, mm. uh, there was a photo that compelled me. Mm. Which age were you by then? 20. 19 to about 25, 26. This was before you went to the USA? I was already in the in USA. The USA. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it also gave me a perspective of thinking about Kampala mm. and uh, Kampala, is it Kampala? It's called Kampala Boxing Club. Mm. But me, I was from Kolo High Boxing Club. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. now, now I'm driving my, my mm. question home. Mm. It used to be a hub. Mm. Uh, a big one, big a one. very big hub. Big one. But now it's fighting mm. to go back to mm. its glorious mm. past. True. Why? Because even apparently the structure it originally used to be mm. at is demolished. There. Demolished. It's not there. Majorly, the sports uh, industry is hurting in Uganda, and uh, we don't have anchor institutions like NCS. Used to be an anchor institution, the Ministry of Sports was an anchor institution. The organizations were compelled by government to support sports, like the beer companies, soda companies, all these people producing. They should mm. come in and, and support. Yes. And that's what was happening. We had the Nail, Nail Football Club, you had Nitro Boxing Club, you had all these institutions because they have the money to sustain. Uh, sports activities, but currently in Uganda, it is serious because in Kenya they are exporting athletics I as know. the topmost. I know it's even much better than tourism. I know, I know. Can I you know. believe it? I know they have more gold medal winners more than any other African countries, and in just a small timeline. I know, I know. So, Moses Ali. Mm. Was he the sports minister by then? Uh, yeah, he was a why, great Why was yeah. he so interesting to you and your career? Not only me, he was a great minister. He was mm. a very down to earth guy, he was critical, he was analytical, he was uh, hands on, he knew every single sports person. Amazing. And uh, anyone could come to him and you know, request for support. And mm. He has a structure of sports. But currently, the, we are making noise in the media, that's what we do. You look at uh, the sports we front. Okay, I don't want to be derogatory, but for example, rugby, which I played also. We were not competitive in rugby. We have a long time to go. Why don't we do like Kenya? Look at boxing and athletics. Put effort. 
as we look at also football and other sports activities, but every everyone must have a, an advantage. You have an advantage, I have an advantage, he has an advantage, each country has an advantage. You can't bundle all the things together, advantage and disadvantage. It means that you won't achieve anything because you will miss the money, you will secrete the money and even the time and resources. So uh, Uganda has that missing. We don't even have a national gym. Oh. We don't. Uganda has no national gym. Let me. The individual, the small, the, the small, gym. the small individual like me can create a, a gym. A small, More than one gym. A small individual. Why wouldn't government have a gym? In Lugogo, we should have a massive gym because everything in life, especially in sports, is about finesse. The fin topic we talked about. Last finesse, week. Yes, yes, finesse. Mm. You must have some meat. Mm. You must be in, sh in good shape. Have some weight. Look at our players. Number eight, number six, 60 kilos. These guys are 85 kgs, you know. Number, you see the rune is the 80 kgs, ah. 85 kgs. <laughs> so, uh, ah. and, and then the, the other big challenge is people have, have not understood what sports is. They can go to, to watch Manu and support, but realistically, they don't have any clue. Manu is my team, you, I would have preferred you use another, another no, name no, no, It doesn't, because it's, it's a foreign country mm. team, and it doesn't affect us deliberately, because someone can't be inspired by Rooney. Mm. The economy is different, the culture is different, everything is different. The upbringing, the, everything is different. So how can someone from Hoima, or from Arua, or from Mbarara, be inspired by Rooney? How? They can't, because they, they, they're not attached. They're detached. But if there's a young person from Arua, eh, in this team called uh, Aduparaka, like Sizokuti, like this kid was sold to Belgium, Farouk, he will inspire the whole area he comes from and other areas and even the people he went to school with. And then people will be inspired to do things, not necessarily sports, not necessarily football, but something productive. Chilling. There is uh, some gentleman called uh, Sharif, Sharif Bogere. You mentored him, yes, I understand. Yes. Yeah, what, He's doing what, well. yeah, what have you always told them about the sport? Focus, 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 focus. Don't think about people that will derail you, items that will derail you, remain focused. Do what you have to do, put in your effort, time, and uh, it starts with you. And uh, he never took alcohol, he's very clear-headed. I have some other kids that have gone around, some have failed, some have are trying. Chef Bogre is one of the ones that should come up. He's with Mayweather now. And uh, you can just imagine That's someone you. from Kisenyi mm. huh? mm. uh, inter sitting with Mayweather and having a discussion as a daily meal. Sports. That's the power of sports. Yeah. From Kisenyi, he just built the mother a house, a small house somewhere which is very good, brilliant, and is developing himself. I have many, many kids in boxing, many that have progressed through the sport, not necessarily that they went and became world champions, mm -hmm. but they changed their lives because of their thinking. For us, at our time, we never accepted someone to take alcohol, to take drugs. Mm -hmm. We never allowed. We, we would say that, but yeah, it's the same with it. Like, stay away from us. And we, like 90%, kids have done great stuff, somewhere in the States, somewhere in Sweden, some in Japan, some in UK. They come back, do something, go back, they have already got nationality there. So the, the, the future is in sports. The, for me that's my emphasis. And for the young people in schools from primary school, if you have some talent, exercise it, put effort in it. Let me ask you, because you, you sound so brilliant about the sport, why did you set such a quick retirement at the age of 26? Because you attempted coming back, which was okay, for yeah. some years, but why? I was time, everything has its time. You must set a timeline. If you persist on issues when a generation is gone, you will be overtaken by events. So currently, like when I was a mayor, it's up to time, it's enough. 
Yes, because I was if going to if, ask if it's you overdone, that. then you become a, an encumbrance to the people. They will, they will be encumbered. You know, so just let me go. You know, so relieve yourself. Chilling. We have a video segment, and uh, our video today, or oh, our spot of music, we are going to talk about a very special man, Philip Bongolo Retire. Mm. You know him? Oh yes. And the song uh, is called Born uh, in Africa. When when I was uh, on the national team, I was a very young guy when he just came back to Uganda and did his first show. And I saw him with a girlfriend, I don't even remember which girlfriend. But they were, they were a bit older than us, you know, and we were on the national team, on the, on the hostel area, and we'd be in the gym, and then we'd see him a lot. There, and it's the first time for me to see a man kiss a woman, you know, physical at that time, 88, 89, 88, yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he was quite yeah, a, a ladies man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had good, he has good news, good they message. Say even up to now, mm. he's one of the best artists you're gonna have. Because of the message, because of the message, it ringles and ringles and ringles and it has the message. This song came out about in the uh, around the early eighties. They say that uh, mid eighties, mid eighties. It came around that still that time all transition yes, yes he was he recorded this song in Sweden yes and then he came back home yes. after knowing that the, the current uh, government uh, has taken over and yes. everything is stabilizing so this is when he actually wanted to root out and show uh show pride yeah. and, and you know be being a Ugandan and patriotism and all that that's that's the motive of this song yeah how what did that how, how does that song speak to you oh, it's amazing. in Africa have you listened to every uh, song that song? Yes, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. He, he's among the best ever here. Because after him, there was this uh, Sema Timba. Mm. He, he had good music also. Is it Sema Timba? This. Maddox. Maddox, yes, yeah, yeah. Sema Timba. But Maddox, I think, is like somewhere recently. <laughs> Until yeah, a little bit younger than he, comes he is younger, generation. but if you look at the music available that you can re echo, re echo, and go back home and listen to, that is the music, the message. So, you're telling me there's a huge difference between those people then yes. and the kind of music they used to do yeah. to our people now? 100%. Most of the music across the world is duplicated. Let's give an example. Chameleon is one of my greatest artists mm. and he's one of the gigantic artists we have right now. Would you equate him to Geoffrey Tires? I was uh, with him when I was campaigning to 2001. We used to move with him and he would sing for the people, you is know. Your friend? Yeah, he's, he's a friend of mine. I have no problem with him. He's a good guy. Do you have his number? Because I've been looking I for his number. I think I have his number. All yes. right, we shall get his number after the show. <laughs> I, have his, I, have, I have all the singers' numbers, most of them that matter. Okay. And, um, you know, the young people who have, have done some work for themselves, they need to have a bit more, they need to be a bit more cautious and careful about how they spend the money they make. Mm do a good productive stuff. Bobby Wine had like two hours with him in Minyonya talking to him about growing up. And he grew up. I, I told him about to go to Busavala. At that time, the land was cheap. I said, go there, buy land. Three days later, he came and told me that, you know, I bought some land. He said, what should I do? I said, go to Buganda and go and see Mr. Chuali Mala. They'll give you it. So, but he doesn't know. He said, no, you go. He went and he started. Wow. Now he does his own thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. R.I.P. to uh, Mr. Lutaya. Mm. He was a great artist. 
he, his music speaks even up to now. Mm. His Christmas song, mm. every festival yes. is played. True. And uh, his uh, legacy song he left uh, about prevention of uh, AIDS, uh, HIV, uh, HIV and, 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 and AIDS uh, was quite quite a, touch, a touching message. So, Mzai, as we wrap up the show, we wrap it up in style. Mm, okay. Yeah? Since you woke up in ungodly hours, mm. I was calling you, Mzai, where are you? Come on, we need to do this, we need to do this. And thank you for the humble space. Mm. In return, we will return a favor by giving you a present. Wow. I bought for you uh, these uh, tea bags um, with all the prayer of my team and the guys you. at home. Thank you. Thank I you. want to introduce to you this thank present you. and uh, consume the, it very the well. Spanish say mucho gracias. No, 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 speak it in French. Yes, merci beaucoup. Yeah? Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Many words, thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you very much for giving me your, your, your time and space. A pleasure. And uh, inviting us at your place. A pleasure. And pleasure. Uh, thank you for the inspirational stories. Pleasure. I've learned uh, many things. And most of, importantly, I've learned I have to invest. If I get my millions in the future, yes. I have to invest. Mm. And, and you have to read constantly. Uh, read constantly mm. to, to pursue, to, 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 to broaden on my And the best guy on the market knowledge. now is Malcolm Gladwell. Look who, for who David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Yeah, 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 because it says it's not about the size, it's about the strategy. Okay. Yeah, and the guy who had uh, Goliath was not about size, it was about strategy. That was David. How can the Bible story? <laughs> 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 it's, it's not Bible story, it's life. It's Mr. reality, Yaka, yes. Thank you very much. A privilege to be. You're quite energetic privilege, and very privilege, intelligent man. Privilege. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The country is lucky to have you. Thank you. And thank you very much for staying with me on UBC TV. Much we have so had a year of time and we have had great time. Now, uh, once again, I would love to thank Quasi Classic for the incredible designs. Today, I just had to put on something simple that would suit the location, you know not my gentleman swag as daily and uh, of course Isaac Nonyutono on that camera but I have Habat everywhere and I have uh, Yiga Henry and uh, Tony Waljaba Tony uh, and then Calvin and then Mugabe Tony these are all incredible mm. people they so, made sure that everything comes on prepared and brilliant. ready for yeah. consumption I've seen the very committed <laughs> very committed young man until next time this has been chilling three parts it has been a long story but Thank you very much for staying with me. See you guys in a heartbeat. Next week on Chilling. I did this properly, yeah? <laughs> I worked on myself. Like, I don't do, Wait, I'm not good with makeup. You're not the only prepared person. <laughs> I also had to tell my designer mm -hmm. to get me a very tight shirt. Wow. So I, 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 I show off some muscles. May I? May I? <laughs> <laughs> Please touch. <laughs> I was like, I have to show some muscles for Cleo. Nice. Mm. It's Thursday. Ugh, and I'm so bored. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay, okay one last one. Okay. It is Thursday. And we're ready to rock. <laughs> <laughs>